Hey everybody, it's Patty Ann here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a larger than mat Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh, and I'm going to make him two feet tall. Um, I have a large format printer, but I don't have a large cameo mat. So I'm just going to use my 12 by 12 mat, and the paper that I have is 11 by 17, I think. So the largest I'm going to cut on my 12 by 12 mat is, well, you'll see in just a sec when you follow me here to silhouette. So let's go there. All right, here it is. You saw just a moment ago the image that I grabbed. I had to right click on it and save the image and then I just opened it up here. So the first thing I'm going to do, let me get this back to the way it ordinarily would be. So I'm going to the page setup panel. I'm gonna unclick some things and I'm not gonna have this on custom auto cameo and I'm gonna turn off my registration marks to begin with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resize him so he's 24 inches tall. So I kind of need to scroll out a little bit. And I'm just going to grab one of these corner ones so I can stretch it. And I'm looking right here at this information. So I'm actually going to make it about 23 maybe inches tall because I'm going to add an offset. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset him, but I bet you any money I won't be able to yet. Let's check it out. I'm going to come over here to the offset panel, and that's the one that looks like a star with an offset on it. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to say offset. And sure enough, just as I suspected, it won't offset him. It offsets this little invisible box that's behind him. So I'm going to undo that can click this arrow or hit Control Z as in zebra on my keyboard to get rid of that. So what I do need to do is I need to trace this. So I'm going to come over to the trace panel over here. The trace panel looks like a butterfly a lot of people say or I think it looks like a piece of toast. Whatever. Just when you highlight over it or hover over it you'll see the words open trace panel and that's exactly what we want to do. I'm opening the trace panel then I'm going to select the area I want to trace. So the first thing I want to do is I want to trace all of Winnie the Pooh. So I'm going to come over here and just trace him. And I'm telling you what, his little face just makes me happy. All right. So this trace isn't good enough for what I want. So I'm going to come over here to the threshold and turn the threshold up. That looks pretty good right there. The lines don't look really jaggedy around him. It doesn't matter that I don't have all of this colored in perfectly. Okay, so this is going to be a print then cut. Since it's a print then cut, the way I'm going to trace that is by coming down here to where it says trace and detach. Okay, trace and detach. I'll click on that. And now it's done its job. I'm going to move him over here and you'll just barely be able to see, but I could actually probably color it and show you that there is a box behind here that I don't want. So I'm going to grab it and delete it. So this is what we want is Winnie the Pooh. And now I'm going to offset him. So I'm going to come over here to the offset panel after I click on him to select him. Come over here to the little star and it says offset panel. Click on that and then I want an external or an outside offset, not an inside one. So I'm going to click on just the word offset. It comes in like this and I'm just going to leave it as the default so I can say apply. And I'm going to change the color of the offset by coming up here to the upper left hand corner and I'm going to make it white. Okay, so that's pretty good, just like that. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to grab both parts of him, right-click and group. Then I'm going to right-click and duplicate. Or I could click on the Control D as in duplicate on my keyboard. Either one. Now I have two of him. Okay, so I'm just going to put him over here for now. I'm going to start working on this guy right here. So now's when I want to go ahead and put on this 12 by 12 mat the custom size paper or cardstock that I have to work with. So let's come back over here to the page setup panel. And 
I click on the first button on the left and it's auto cameo for the machine. The cutting mat is cameo. The reveal, all that does is changes the color of the mat like this. So that's fine. The media size, that's what I want to change. The media that I have is 11 by 17, but that really won't work on this mat. So I'm going to change the media size to 11 wide. And point 11, okay, and then just hit enter or leave that like that. And there it is. That's how much space we have to work with almost. There's another thing we need to do, and that is to turn on the registration lines. So I'm going to click here, the third button over, and that's the registration lines. Click on that. Notice right now they're toggled off. I'm going to toggle those lines to on. And now you can see it put these registration marks on here and this little checkerboard area. So I can see what of him will fit in here, but to make it even easier for me to see, what I'm going to do is this. Go back to the first little tab here in the Page Setup panel, the one that says actually Page Setup. Click on that. Then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on Show Cut Border. Notice what that did. It put these red lines all the way around here. So that shows me more easily where I have to fit my Winnie the Pooh in so that he will print and cut perfectly. So let's scroll in a little bit using the little bug tool and like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get his little head and I'm going to cut it and put it in here because I think it'll fit perfectly if I rotate it. So to cut his head, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the knife tool. And it's on poly, which is what I'd like, I think. And auto apply, I'm going to uncheck. So I'm just going to start here, right here, and I'm going to start drawing this here. I'm just going to follow along his head like this. So I'm going right in the middle of those colors. Every time I click, I'm leaving down a little point. And I guess when I get over here, I'll go like this. And right out here and double click because I finished that. And now I can click on apply. So basically what that's done is it's cut his head and the outline off just like that. So what I really need to do now is I need to center these back together again and I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Maybe not. I want that down like that a little bit. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab both of them and say group. Now there is something I'm going to do this time that I didn't do on the last time I showed you this and oftentimes I do do it because it makes it easier for me. So let's move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to get a little, uh, let's see, what should I do? Hmm. I think I'll just draw something freehand. I'm going to draw something again with the polygon tool right here. So these are the drawing tools. I'm going to take the polygon tool. And every time I click here now, I'm going to be adding a little piece of a node. So what I'm, I'm going to show you what I'm doing with this now. It's going to be very helpful soon. Whoops, I didn't mean to double click that. Let's see, can I go back and continue? Oh, let me let me start that again. Sorry. I wanted to make that a complete thing. So I'm going to start again. Start right here. I guess, and just start going out along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm making a piece that's I'm going to make white that's going to be attached to this piece and it's going to help me later when I go back and I want to um, tape these two pieces together. So double click here when I get to the end. Now right now it's this bluish color. I'm going to click on that to change it to white or I could actually 
get a color on Winnie's face and it won't show up as much. So I'm going to do that. I'll get this eyedropper. Just come down here and get a piece, a color like that. And I'm going to right click on this piece and say send to the back. So it's not a perfect color because it's not really going to match that. So I guess what I could do if I wanted was to change it. But I'll just leave it like that. So how this is going to help us is this. When I come over here and I want to put this back on here and I go to the back to tape instead of just having this edge and this edge I'll be able to tape it onto this piece so that's what's going to help be very helpful all right so this guy's done I'm going to grab it all and say group okay so I can move him off to the side the next thing whoa I got to get both the um both pieces here and I got to make sure that they're lined up right since I messed that up before use my arrows on my keyboard oops once I have something selected because these arrows are really work well and let's see how that looks okay that looks super duper so I'm gonna group this together again so I don't mess it up group and what I think I'm going to get now is just this jacket. So I'm going to go like this and up through here. And I like to sometimes practice a little bit before I actually do it, just to make sure it makes sense in my head where I'm going. So again, I'm going to get the knife tool. Solid poly. Auto apply is unchecked. Just going to start right here. And go in and start getting his jacket. Then I'll go up on his arm and across here hmm. I'm trying to decide if I should go right there if that's going to leave a weird point I think I'll just go with his jacket like this some of these things are just a matter of personal preference. Just go right out there. Okay, now I need to apply this. And I'm going to group, oops, this, this part together, group. And then I'm going to group this part together before I do anything else, group. All right, let's see how this piece is looking. Okay, that looks pretty good. So remember, we already have the other piece done. So now what I can do is I can add something to this one to make it easier to tape the two pieces together. So once again, I'll just come over here to this line tool, get the second one in, the polygon, and I'll just start right here, I guess. So again, this is just going to make like a reddish color here. It's going to make it a little bit easier for me to have something else to tape onto. And then I can just go around like this again, just not worrying about being really precise. Okay, so there's that and I'll change it to um, the reddish color that's in the top that I'm using. Whoops, I'm going to use the eyedropper and maybe get that color. Then I'm going to right click on it and say send it to the back. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to group these two things together, right click and group. So let me bring over that little part of his head and let's see what we got so far. So we have this, which will need to be spun like this when we put it together. And this will be sent to the back like that. I'll put it down in like that. And now we have this piece, and now if I were ready, I could bring this piece over if it fit, but it's too big. I right click and bring this one to the front, and it would fit like, whoops, I gotta rotate it, like this. It's just like putting together a puzzle. Just like, pretty much like that. I'd rotate it a little bit more if I was doing this in real life instead of just here on my screen. So that's looking pretty good. So that's what I'd have there. But I want to show you that this isn't going to work because this is too big for my mat. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to rotate this and see what will fit. 
wonder if I could get, nope. I was wondering if I could get one leg in his body. It looks like I'll have to do each leg individually. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this back around. Oops. And I'll go ahead and get this leg first. So again, I'm going to get the knife tool. Come here and just start slicing. And the nice thing about this is you can make these slices in these areas where they won't be that noticeable. Especially if you like to use glitter on some of these outlines. It'll totally hide it. You won't even know it's there. All right, did I use the knife tool? Yes, apply. Looks like maybe I didn't have the knife tool selected. Let me go back and see what did I do. Try the, oh, I had another tool. Let's get the knife tool. So solid. Oopsie, don't want to do that. Okay. Knife tool. And then solid poly auto applies off. So again, I'll just start here and go through that little dark spot right there. In okay, case so that's where I'm going to add some glitter. Because I do like to glitter up my animals. And I learned this from my guys. I learned this from Jill from Crick Flicks, if anybody's familiar with her and what she does. So I'm going to apply. Now his little leg comes off. Oh, but I want to undo that because I want to keep group these two things together first. Group there. So before I finish this one, now I'm going to put a little tab on this to make it easier to stick up underneath of there. So I'm going to come over here again to the line tool, second one in, which is a draw polygon. And I'm just going to start drawing a little polygon that's going to come up out of here, making it a little bit easier for me to glue these two pieces together or tape them together, adding a little bit more stability too. Whoops, I moved that. Okay, there we go. Right now, I'm going to change this one's color. Again, I can use the eyedropper, kind of change it to that color. Right click, send it to the back, and then just go ahead and group all of this. Group it all. See, and then that's going to fit right up in there. All right, now I'll do the other leg. Oops. Keep moving it before I group it. Group it. Okay, and I'm going to get the knife tool again. All of these settings are the same. Just come up here and start getting this leg. Okay, and double click at the end and then say apply. Now I'm going to grab both these and say group, bring them out. And once again, I'm going to add a little thing. <laughs> I'm going to come up here to the drawing tools and line tools, get the draw polygon, and just start drawing a polygon right down here. So this is just adding that extra little piece to help. Whoops, that might be over a little too far. Let's see, can I do, oops, start again. Okay, here we go. All right, and so then I'll just color this again, select it, change its color so it's a little bit like what we got there. Right click, send it to the back, and then just go ahead and group. So we are basically done because I believe his body's going to, whoa, did it again. Right, I gotta grab them both and group them first. All right, so now I'm gonna bring them down here and rotate them, see if they fit, and sure enough, fits perfectly. Okay, so the next thing I have to do is I'm going to one by one print these and then cut. So I have to do this first, print it, then send it to my silhouette to cut it. When I'm done with this one, I'll do the next one. The two legs I can probably do together on here easily. Whoops, come here, you. Don't think I can fit three things on here. I'm going to try, though, just for the fun of it. So this will go there. This leg can go... Hmm. Nah, I think this will be too hard, so I'm not going to put that. I'll just do the two legs together like I said I was going to do originally. Here we go. And then I'll do this part and then the other. And then I'll come back and show you what I have. Okay, here on my desk you can see Winnie the Pooh, and I'm going to show you how I put him together now. Recall that I have these little pieces, and I added that extra little piece right here, right? That's going to allow me to attach this piece to it quite 
easily so I can get these done. Now, if you have any little bit of white like this that shows up like I do, I usually will take like one of my markers or something or colored pencils and just color that little part right there so it doesn't show up on the finished product. So the other thing that I did do, and let me move these out of the way, was that I just took two sheets of my larger cardstock and sent them through my Cameo. Since I have a Cameo 4, and I don't know if you could do this on the 3, but I'm able to cut this without a mat because this, if I show you, would be too big to cut on my 12 by 12 mat. Well, this would, this would almost fit, not quite, no matter how I twirl it around. If I had a larger mat, I could use that and probably get the whole guy on it. This would not fit on my 12 by 12 mat because of his feet. So I was able to put two 11 by 17 sheets in, and so I only ended up with two pieces that made up Winnie's body. So the first thing I would do is go ahead and tape this together, matching up these sides here. Um, here it is, I'm looking for my scotch tape. So I'll just scotch tape these together. First, I just put a couple little pieces on, and then I can go the whole way across if I feel I want that extra stability. Okay, there we go. So there's this. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these or tape these pieces together. So let me move this out of the way and do that right quick. So here's his head. And again, since I have that extra little piece I added, I can just put but this right up like this nicely and I can see exactly where it's supposed to go. The only bad thing is I got to flip it over then and try to keep it or what I could do instead of that, what am I thinking? I will just take my little ATG tape runner, I forgot, and just do this. I love these tape runners. I have a link for it down below. Um, I just can't, I couldn't live without this thing. I just use it for everything, whether it's for these larger than mat guys that I made, the nutcrackers I made earlier this year, um, the... Uh, when I work on cards, I use this. So I just really, really like to use these. So I'm going to put that on there like that. And again, as I said, I would take a marker right here, but I don't have them right down here with me. Or colored pencil, a red one, and do this little spot right here. But I'll worry about that and get that later. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll do his body. Now again, I made this extra piece right here that's going to help hide stuff. I think this goes on here next somehow. Oy, oy, oy. I'm not the best at putting together puzzles. So let's see, his legs have got to go. His legs got to come out of here. I think I can. I think I can. There we go, finally. All right. So again, I'm going to match up these little lines and look how nice that fits it's perfect and again if i use stickles to make this glittery you're never going to see those places where i cut i don't have to cut just straight across by slicing i can actually go along the curves and that really helps to hide it so i'll go ahead and put some of this here and then again on the back sometimes i stabilize these little areas with some extra paper or tape and i'll show you that in a sec so let me get this on here first. So let's see if I can remember how it goes. Like this. Trying to really match it up nicely. It looks pretty good. There, look at that the spot over here. I didn't have an extra piece, so see how that has nothing to tape to, but we're going to fix that. 
Then all I have to do are his two legs. So one with the extra piece is going to go under here. And then this one obviously will go in the other spot. So I'll just put this on here. And I love these tape guns. But I will be using my glue gun as well because I'm going to make this one stand up. So I'm going to make it very sturdy by adding the popsicle sticks. As I said, I've learned this a long time ago from Jill on Crick Flicks. If you're looking to buy some of these things, she makes really beautiful ones. She likes to add all kind of embellishments to hers, like, oh, I don't know, if she was doing a ballerina, she'd put real cloth on there like a tutu. Or she does these little babies a lot, and she adds stuff. I think she even added diapers, pampers to some ones. <laughs> she likes to make them pretty realistic. Okay, so... That looks pretty good. Again, I will cover this with the stickles. So the next thing that I do is I would turn it over to the back and where some of these places are that I've cut, I can take some of my scraps that I cut off of when I was actually cutting out the shapes and just cut some strips. And doesn't matter if they're really, really nicely done because they're going to be hidden. But right now I'm having trouble with my lighting here to see exactly where I want to put this. So I think I'll put one right here maybe to cover that little spot. So I'll just take this. And actually I think I'll run the glue on this paper instead of on Winnie. And then just cover up this little spot here. Just to give it a little extra stability. That's where a slice was. Another cut. Remember this one down here that wasn't totally done? I can take that one with this piece and just reinforce it like this. Again, like I said, this is never going to show what I'm doing back here. This is just for my own peace of mind to make sure things are stable. Right here looks like could be using some. Maybe I'll go like this. Okay, I'll just finish this part up, and then I'll meet you back here. Well, just a sec. Let me show you one more thing. Then I'll meet you back here and show you how I do the sticks. So there's that. So the only other thing that we need now is this second part of Winnie. And this will go on here, on the back of him, and then there'll be popsicle sticks in the center that'll make him really, really sturdy. And then I will take my stickles and embellish him. So meet me back here in a little bit when I have my glue gun out. Okay, I'm back. I've got Winnie the Pooh here. And I've got my glue gun heated up. And I have my popsicle sticks. I have several different sizes, regular ones. And then these big tongue depressors. And somewhere I have some even tinier ones like this. But I probably won't need to use these on Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I also have lots of extra glue. So I'm just going to start up near the top of him. And I'm going to place a couple of sticks here just to see about where I might like them to be. And you know, I might even just put one of these middle ones here like that. So that's going to add a lot of nice stability to him. So I'm going to start putting a line of glue first. And I need to get new glue already because I knew I was just about out already okay and I'll put a stick right here need to get a new glue gun this is not the best of guns I'll tell you this was a Joann's cheapy <laughs> I need to get one of those great big ones that holds a lot of glue because when you make these you use a lot of glue you'll be surprised at how many glue sticks I'll go through today so there's that part. So now what I can do is I can go ahead <coughs> and start putting him on here. So I'm just going to start at the top of these. And I'm going to get him placed on here just perfectly if I can. Should stand up to see what I'm doing better. But that looks pretty good. Okay, then just press it down. Okay. This isn't where I usually work. It's not as good a workspace as I have over at the other place. And oh, by the way, I did find some markers that I did have down here. So I was going to show you. You can just take a marker like this 
or whatever color you think would blend in well. And these little spots that are white, just put a little marker. And actually works much better if you do it before you've glued them or taped them together, because then you don't run the risk of getting it all over everything. But you can pretty much hide it like that. Come up here and hide this part a little bit. Any little white spots that show out. Like that, I can just get rid of that. This little spot over here. That just makes it look a little bit better, and that place needs to be put down a little better. This is just doctoring it up just a little tiny bit. Okay. All right. Much better. Put these away. All right, now I'll continue working on him. So I'm going to take this up like this. Get another couple of sticks and figure out where I'm going to put them. One here. Sometimes I like to do some like diagonally just to make sure I'm getting a lot of good support in here. Especially around here where I've um, glued it together or taped it together I should say. Alright, so that's good. Let me move that up. Come in here. And just put a, some glue, a line, nice line of glue. And then stick this one down. Put a line of glue here. So I've already finished almost that whole glue stick, believe it or not. I've got to put another one. Look, it's not enough. I've got to get another one. This uses a lot, a lot of glue. A lot, a lot of and this gun is not very good. Okay, and then I can put this one maybe that way. So this is going to have really nice stability because I am going to make this be a stand up Winnie. Good. All right. And actually, I could have just put all these um, sticks on here first without worrying about this piece. I believe that's what I usually do. Let me mail that down. Put some sticks on here first. Just go ahead and put all the sticks on here. And then come back and mess with that other. Much better plan here. So then all I have to do is come through. So I don't know how I got out of order there, but this is the way I usually do it. Just about ready for more glue again. Can you believe that? So, put a big stick here and maybe one of those smaller sticks might fit right here. And now for his feet, like that. Oh, and I did have a mark. I do want to put this stick in here, right in here. Let me break this stick a little bit. It's too big. So I'm going to put this stick in here. This is the one that's going to go into the base that's going to hold him. And I had drawn a little line here because I knew which way I wanted him to be able to stand upright. I don't ever like to have the stick come right up through the center of their bodies because I think that looks a little gross. <laughs> so I do it like this. There you go. So that's pretty good. Let's see how that's going to be. Perfect. And if there's any part that shows out that I don't want to show like that, I can always uh, cut that off later. But see, this is how I usually do it. Like I said, now I just go back and put the glue on these things. But again, I've run out of glue. Oh, this glue gun is horrible. Come on. Won't let the glue go in there. Here we go. Finally. Nope, not quite. Okay. 
See, I'm having to push the glue in, and that's just crazy. All right, let's see how that is. Really turning out cute. There's another little spot down here of the white that I could probably do with the marker. Maybe I'll do it before I glue it down. Let's look at this marker out. And I can just kind of pop this up a little bit so I can try to get right in there on that spot. But again, it's not really going to matter because I'm going to be putting stickles on here. I'm going to jazz it up with glittery stickles. So I don't really have to do this this much. That looks good. Okay. So you have a few more places to do here, all along here. That little popsicle stick. This big guy here. This guy. all that together and put a little bit right here too if I can get any to come out Pull that together another glue stick this is about my fifth one right fourth or fifth hopefully you can see what's happening down here at his foot so I've got this in here now I'm gonna do this foot around the foot a little bit okay and that's like that okay there we have it he can stand up perfectly so I'm gonna go ahead and get my stickles out and show you how I decorate him now um, and I'll be right back okay I have my stickles now I have this box full some people have a lot more than this but this ought to get me through. So I'm going to start with this one that's called Sunburst. And what was I going to do with the Sunburst? Let me think. Or do I want a little something different? Huh. I think I'll just start with a red for the red of here. This one's called Cranberry. This one's called... Christmas red. I think I'll use Christmas red just because it feels pretty full and the cranberry one does not. So that's going to be my decision for which color to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and start outlining some of this stuff. I like to get a little bit out first. Make sure it's not clogged up. So I'm just going to start here and just outlining him. And this is what I mean about how it hides that little white mark anyway. So you really, really don't need to worry about it much. So I've already put a base on him. He stands up nicely. I just, just used that dowel rod that I showed you. And then I have um, a piece of wood that has a hole drilled into it that's supposed to fit the dowel rod. This time it didn't though, so I did put a little bit of glue, hot glue, inside. And that helped it to stay right inside where it needed to be. Okay, let's put a little more there to hide that little white spot that I missed. I'm the worst when it comes to stickles. I put my hands in them all the time. I 
and then if I'm really careful and I don't, then I'll, I don't like to wait long enough for them to dry. So I'm just going to do this. Put the stickles on him and then go out to dinner because it's just about dinner time. Put a little more maybe here and here and here. I'm just kind of following those lines and it really makes it look cute. Um, for his nose, let's see. I think for his nose, I will just use the glossy accents. It looks like this. Got this at Hobby Lobby. These stickles I usually get at scrapbook.com and I'll have a link for it down below for you. It's my affiliate link. If you use my link, I get a few cents commission. Um, and it really just helps me be able to keep making videos for you. So if you're in the market to buy something, appreciate it when you use my links that are down below. Okay. And let's see. Not sure what I should do about his mouth yet. I might just want to wait for a minute and see what this this yellow that would probably look goofy, right? I might not have a good color for his little mouth. Maybe I should use red. Yikes! I just don't know. I'm just gonna go around his head a little bit with this yellow and see how it looks. I'll do his ears first and then. I don't have to commit to everything. That looks pretty. I like when they get sparkled up. It really just adds a lot to them. So I'll continue on. Have you used stickles before? They're really, I just love them. The glitter that they provide, the shine, just really looks pretty. Can't tell if I got any over there. There we go. Now I see it. All right, let's see. Since I've done that, I might as well do his arms. And this one. Let's see how, what time is it getting to be? 6.15. It's definitely dinner time. Maybe I can finish this and don't go too fast because that's when you go way off the lines like I just did. But I'll pretend like it was on purpose. <laughs> Here's where I'm hiding those white parts. And you probably can't see where I am right now. Coming up around his leg and then the other side of his body. And let's see if I got it. Oh no. Here we go. Okay. Looks really cute. How about right here on his nose? Certainly under his mouth. Still haven't decided what to do with his mouth yet. I could use one of these just it's a sparkly. This is this is one of the older ones, so there's no name for this one, I don't think. It just says glitter glue. diamond. I don't know. I think I'll just use the yellow. If I don't like it, I can always add something else. Sometimes you got to shake it down. I actually think the yellow was probably a pretty good choice. Okay. 
right, he's done. I'll take a picture of him and put him at the end of the video and I'll upload this and check it out. If you have any questions, let me know. All right, thanks for joining me. Hey, check out my videos down or my links down below. If you're in the market to buy something, please use them. It um, helps me keep this going. Also, uh, be sure to join us on our Facebook groups or listed below and Patreon as well. So thanks again, you guys. Bye.